Hello and welcome to the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. I'm your host, Nick McGowan, and on this show, my guests and I unpack the stories that shape us and the lives that we lead on our path to self mastery. So let's not wait any longer. Let the games begin. Hey, Justin, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm good. It's great to be here, Nick. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm glad that you're here. So I got to call this out first. Uh, you're in Dallas, right? Yep. We didn't talk about this before we hit recording, but uh, I'm from Philly. Are you a Are you an Eagles fan? <laughs> or are you a football fan? <laughs> well, I got one better for you, man. I am a I'm a Washington Commanders fan. Oh no! I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm. I am too. I used to be a uh, a flag boy. I, I call it a flag guy for the Redskins at the time. So I used to run around the field, FedEx field with the flag with the team uh, about 15 years ago. Wow. So I'm diehard. Man, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously they're, that whole organization's going through some rough stuff right now. The whole Snyder thing and everything else that's happening. Yeah, don't don't rub it in, Nick. And if you throw batteries at me during this, this interview, I'm gonna be a little ticked off. Well, I, at first I was wondering, you know, are you a Cowboys fan? And we were going to talk in that direction. Oh. But, yeah, well, hey. we can I, agree on. Yeah. Yes, we absolutely can. Thank you. Common enemy. Yeah, exactly. But, hey, man, I, I wish the best for Wentz. I enjoy him. I like him as a person. And I hope hope they're successful. But what after Rivera said recently. Now, it's funny because this episode's not going to come out for, like, another couple months. So by the time it happens, like probably be close to the uh, Super Bowl and people will be like, what is what is going on? Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about, man. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you jumping on. You were actually referred by another guest and that guest was awesome. So Corey Quinn was a guest on the show. Um, and as soon as I asked him, hey, who else, you know, would be a good fit for the show? You instantly popped up. So Justin, why don't you give us a bit of context? Tell us what you do and something that uh, most people don't know about you that's a little odd or bizarre. Yeah, Corey is an awesome guy, dear friend, former colleague. Um, so I'm, I can't wait to hear his episode. So gosh, I'm a professional EOS implementer. I, I help businesses. I teach, coach, facilitate them mastering uh, a simple set of practical tools to help them get more of what they want out of their business, run a better business, live better lives. Uh, gosh, something weird. I've lived a weird life. I um I used to be a club promoter. I used to write under a pen name for a magazine, a singles column. Uh, I had dinner at Lionel Richie's house once. I was a cabana boy at Calvin Klein's house in the Hamptons. Um, the list goes on about weird, weird shit in my life. Uh, it's been kind of, it was fun for a while. <laughs> Man, it sounds it. I mean, I, I guess I didn't need to ask that question because you pretty much told me you were the flag guy at uh, the Redskins. The flat guy is the highlight of my life. Let's be honest. So, yeah. How the hell did you get to that position? Or, you know, one day you're like, you're probably wondering how I got here with a flag in my hand running around the field. Yeah, I was friends with a lot of the, the, the cheerleaders and the, the cheerleading coach was a buddy. And uh, it, it was not a paid gig, but we went, went to the parking lot and tailgated. And, you know, a couple of my colleagues got fired for being drunk and running the wrong way on the field. Um, but uh, we got to basically as close as you can be to being a part of the game without being a player, uh, a team member. It was, it was a pretty cool experience. Of course, the, the, the team was terrible at the time, so there was that to contend with, but it was still fun. Yeah, that's such a cool thing that most people aren't able to say. You know, it's not like, uh, and that's not something that you found a, you know, a job hiring sort of situation like in the classifieds. You're like, hmm, I could be the flag guy. But through your connections, you got to that point. So, man, it sounds like you've, just reading through your your bio uh, and a bit about you and the content that I see on LinkedIn because we're connected on LinkedIn. It looks like you've kind of lived a crazy life. So I want to unpack some of the stories. Are there some major key moments in time that you can kind of look back at as a pivotal moment where you're like, man, that moment right there, that changed me. Yeah. Well, I got really sick. I, I co-founded a company in Dallas, um, the end of 2013, a music marketing company. And, uh, I just returned from a sabbatical. I spent a few months solo backpacking around Southeast Asia after my last pretty intense uh, seven-year gig. 
started a uh, founded a company here that uh, today is doing really well. We raised a bunch of money. Uh, it's got 80 employees. It's a music marketing technology company in in Dallas. And uh, but I, I didn't last very long there, unfortunately, because I got uh, mono, which is not fun for any human, but uh, it hits adults hard, and it hits adults who are working 80 hour weeks even harder. Um, and so I wasn't able to recover. Uh, and it turned into this chronic illness. I had to actually leave the company. I was also engaged. So my life was just kind of dominated by work and it was just, a, and, and, and my health at the time. And uh, silly me, wherever you go, there you are. I traveled halfway around the country back to where I'm from originally in the DC area with my that then, then fiance took another C-level role at a startup doing big data and analytics in the cannabis industry. But as my health continued to fail uh, and wound up spending 10 days at the Mayo Clinic and sick, pretty much constantly debilitating illness. And so um, it's something I still deal with 10 years later, uh, much better place than I was then. Uh, but it was a real journey, has been a journey of self-discovery, of learning how to operate a lot differently in the world. Um, you know, Western medicine is not designed to, uh, to treat things that things like what I have contended with and our expectations in this society is give us the, the red pill and make it go away. And unfortunately that doesn't exist for, for some, some more tricky things that medicine doesn't yet understand. So I think getting sick, uh, was probably the most pivotal moment of my life. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if I would change it though. I think about that all the time. I really don't know if I would change anything. Yeah, that's a good point, man. Uh, I think a lot of people, when they think back or think about thinking back, like on your deathbed, what are you going to think? You know, I shouldn't have worked or I should have spent more time with my family or what have you to have moments where you're fighting something like people had fought COVID or people fight cancer at different times throughout their careers and things that they're going through and have some of that stuff kind of linger. I know, and there's kind of that joke with men where you just get kind of like a little bit of cold. You're like, ah, oh my God, the world's over. I need a blankie, my mama, and some chicken soup and leave me alone sort of thing. Um, so I know that that can kind of drain on you naturally, even if you got allergies or some stupid little cold. So something like that for you to go through a company that you had and then to leave and to join another company that's got to be tough on the mind as well because your body is feeling it and your mind's then being drained by all of that. So how did you manage your mindset looking back at it now in that period of time? You know, I, it's something that I've wondered a lot about because I managed to be pretty high functioning. Um, it's funny. I, I, uh, I'm recently in a, it's funny. It's been such a long journey, but even, even recently and, and through it all, COVID certainly didn't help, right? It, it stirred a lot of things that I had, that I'd put to bed. It kind of brought them back to the surface. So uh, I think I probably would have been healthier a lot sooner had I not gotten COVID. Um, so that sort of extended and exacerbated things. But I, I look back and I was in survival mode, you know? And I, I recently started seeing a sports, sports psychologist, believe it or not, because I'm, I was an athlete and I feel like that muscle sort of atrophied that sort of competitive fire um and uh i recently started seeing a sports psychologist because I, I thought well I'm, I'm finally ready to really think about self-improvement and performance improvement beyond just like feeling okay and she said you know what that athlete mindset had not atrophied it was just fully focused on survival and now you're you've sort of switched that because you've survived and kind of gotten through the other side. Now you can be more intentional about improvement. And so I think I just, I just fought, 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 fought. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And I'm sure that made you more sick and more sick and at times, you know, but it probably also helped um, get your mind off of it in certain ways because you could dive into projects. I know there are moments where you kind of sit there, even if you kind of lock your office door and you're like, I just need a moment to myself. It'll last for a moment or two, but then your brain starts picking up other stuff and you go, oh shit, I got to go grab this or got to go grocery shopping or 
I need to take my shoes off because they've been on all day. Like your brain will just start popping different things in. Was, was there a lot of cloudiness that happened? Or do you feel like you were kind of able to probably push yourself through and be at the top of your game or at least as close as you could be um, while kind of pushing through the, the sick brain in a sense? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely was pushing on multiple fronts. I was, I was a little too intense about healing because I was, uh, I just took an intensity to every single, I mean, I, Nick, I can't tell you how many modalities, doctors, therapies, oh God, I don't even want to know how much money I've spent on like figuring this out. It's, it probably would make me sick if I saw a number. And it was so intense. I was just like, uh, the stakes were so high. Like every bet was a thousand dollar hand, you know? And so I was always pursuing something, but that, that was always occupying my mind. But I, but I had my hopes set so high on things that inevitably I still expected the magic cure. And when it didn't happen, I was let down and it was on to the next one. Um, meanwhile, I'm focusing on work and that felt like a healthy place to put my mind and occupy my attention and, and sometimes forget about how I was feeling when you get into that zone and you get your mind locked into a project or task, you can kind of, you got in that flow state and you're not thinking about your body anymore. Uh, so, so yeah, between those two things, it was, uh, you know, it was an intense period, really intense, especially over COVID when, you know, we we're all locked up and had time to just sit with ourselves for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I know that stirred up a lot for a lot of people, um, just thinking about different things, career change, relationship changes, all of that. I've gone through some of that stuff as well. So I, I think there's a lot of people that can relate in that sort of way. And I, I don't want this to sound weird, but I appreciate when I have guests that come on and tell kind of a, a tale that's similar to what a lot of people experience, but at a depth where most people didn't go through mono or get COVID or and get COVID, you know, and kind of work through that and have to work through that. So I appreciate that you're able to hop on here and talk through this stuff kind of retrospectively while still kind of processing through it. Because for the most part, uh, I think in certain ways, things are relative because somebody else's pain may be greater than all of that, but on a smaller scale compared to what you've been through. So we can all kind of relate to that, that sort of sense. Um, and right now going through careers, going through what's potentially the recession, the, you know, all the, all the stuff that I think we could look at and just get really frustrated with and go, well, what the fuck, why even do this? So going through that time where you felt like you just kept hitting door after door after door, but there was still some glimmer of hope that was in there. Now, as you look back at that, if you were to talk to somebody that's going through that right now, is there some sort of advice you'd give that person other than the canned, like you can do it, you know, you got this, like keep at it, that sort of deal. What sort of real shit would you be able to kind of put your hand on their shoulder and go, look, this is what's coming is what you're going to go through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. I would say stop looking for the magic bullet right? The silver bullet, if it doesn't exist and start instead of being desperate in your search, take a more curious, curious approach to it, like get interested and apply a lighter touch, right? Where not everything is so high stakes and, and really take responsibility and own your, your, your choices your your life and your your health from a physical a mental a spiritual and emotional perspective and um and be okay with whatever happens you have to be okay the definition of of unhappiness is the the further the delta is between the way things are and the way you want them to be and so you can always strive and you always should strive for improvement but but if, if you always expect it and you can't be okay with the current state, you'll always be unhappy. Even if you're fully healthy and you, it's, it's the next million dollars is when life's going to be good, right? So, you know, I, for me, it was just a massive, massive learning experience in how to change my entire way I, I moved in the world in order to, to be okay. And, that, and when I did, that's when my body started to follow my mindset and, and heal. Interesting. 
I love how that stuff works. You know, it's almost like um, in some ways sort of giving in to get ahead. When you give into it and say, all right, here we are, we're moving in this direction. Um, I think certain people will look at that as a faith driven thing or an intuition sort of thing, or there are certain different ways you can kind of color it or put different glasses on, but it's all about the same thing of understanding, right? And being like, all right, I'm here. Fucking whatever's going to happen is going to happen. The only thing I can do is be accountable to me and keep moving forward. And I don't want to harp on what you've gone through, but here you are now. Here's what you're doing. So how do you live differently now, having gone through all that? And I get that you're still kind of processing through some of it and working through some of it. But as you see in the next couple of years, as you're kind of moving ahead, how do you see things being different because of it? Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head, surrender, right? That's that's a, that's a concept or a mentality in faith, but I mean, I think it just applies to anything in life, you know, the, whether it's, you know, God, the universe, whatever it is you believe in, you know, we, we only have so much control and we have to be as best we can within a, a, a framework where we know we, we're not the ones, you know, who are going to decide ultimately what, what happens. There's a lot, so many things that are out of our control and we just have to make the best of it. Uh, you know, the, the way I've changed, I, I think if I hadn't, gone through this experience, I'd probably still be drinking uh, way more than I needed to or want or should. I'd, I'd have a much unhealthier lifestyle. Um, I probably wouldn't, I would have more pleasure in life, but I wouldn't have as much true happiness and joy. I think I would be less satisfied because I would be always looking for what's next. I'm very antsy, angsty, like always with my mind, you know, four steps ahead. And it's been very difficult over my life to be present. So I think I have way more presence and more gratitude now than I than I would have otherwise. And I probably would have just lived the very, and it's certainly nothing's perfect. I'm not saying I have it all figured out far from it, but I probably would have lived a, a life that was very reactive and not intentional forever until I died. Damn. Yeah, and that's one of those things you can think about now. You don't have to be on your deathbed to think, oh, I shouldn't have. But that'll scare the shit out of you to even think to not be intentional. Uh, I, I found the intentionality of life to be interesting because as we grow, and I can only say by my own account because of my own life, but as I've grown, I've been able to look at things differently and my intentions have been different. And I'm right there with you. As you go through stuff, it shapes you, or at least it should. It should, it gives you the opportunity to allow you to shape yourself and be able to set your intentions different. Um, but, but there's also seasons, right? Like seasons where you kind of flow through things and where things are reactionary because they're coming at you. But even within that, you can still be intentional. And I, I found it to be more principle based where it's, I'm going to take the intentions of this is what is okay with me. Like, I'm not going to go murder somebody. That's not okay. That's on the don't fucking do Nick list, you know? Um, so when you think of your intentionality and looking at what you're doing now, you've started a couple of companies, you've run things, you've been in different industries. Do you find that you're kind of in that spot where your intention is what you're doing right now is the thing that you know you need to be doing? Or are you still kind of on that path toward that? No, 100%. What I'm doing now, I, everything sort of led me to, to this. And it's it's almost like one of those things where your consciousness is the last to know because every other cell in your body already knows. So the, by the time you make the decision, it's like, you're, you're okay, bro, like catch up. You're like, come on, we've been waiting on you. Um, so yeah, I mean, what I'm doing now is, is, uh, is uh, really, I think in a large part has helped me get healthy because I'm finally in a place and in a role where it all things are coming together and coalescing in a way that supports the life that I I meant to live that I want to live and that it's healthy for me to live yeah yeah oh man I, I bet that's got to be vastly different having conversations when you think from a business perspective having those conversations now still knowing what you had gone through and what conversations you had to have as you were sick um, but you had also touched on relationships. You said you had a fiance at that point. Now there's a balance that is typically kind of difficult, especially here in the U S where we basically just fucking work or you don't. There's like the complete opposite where people are like, I don't do anything at all. I get government money or what have you. And the other people that are just working and working and working, 
trying to figure out ways that they can, you know, do it the right way. Uh, but what does balance look like for you now? Like, how are you balanced throughout your day? So you're not just fucking gung ho and driving the wrong, basically the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's part of the joy of what I'm doing is that flexibility. I'm a, I'm a solo printer. I, you know, my boss is a bit of a dick, but I work for myself. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I, I can take my family just went with me on a business trip. Right. And so like they came in the car and we got an Airbnb and they hung out at a park while I was with my client. They showed up to pick me up at my client's, you know, house where we conducted a session and met everybody. And, you know, I can take a Tuesday off and have lunch with my wife. And, um, you know, that, that uh, I work primarily from a home office and I can my, my son now gets up but before he wakes his mom up, creeps into my my office and sits on my lap to look at pictures and just man that's it that's it for me yeah i know there are different um different ways of looking at success people you know like you had said earlier you can keep chasing after the money you can ch keep chasing after the things but it sounds like you're actively living that you know uh but you'd also pointed out earlier like you wouldn't you wouldn't change it you wouldn't change the shit that you've been through do you think that's because you've kind of forgiven yourself or forgiven the situations of things that you've gone through? Or do you still have some processing to do throughout those whole situations? Because honestly, man, we've only scratched, scratched the surface. We talked about you being sick and you told me that you were running around with flags in your hands and doing all these other things. So I can almost guarantee there's other crazy shit in there. So being able to kind of manage through that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was the hardest thing is when you know what you're capable of and you know that you can't fully manifest that. Like, that's sad when you can't fully be who you are. And so you have to put a government. Because for me, I, 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 if I, like, tap back into that fire, I would pay a price during that stretch and then have to go get in a bed for a week to lick my wounds. So I couldn't sustain it. So... For me, I had to learn how to walk this kind of middle path of sustainability where I could tap into that, that kind of that, like that, uh, maniac energy, but also like learn to walk a fine line and back it out and kind of find that sweet spot, find the flow. And, uh, I think that's much more sustainable as you, as anybody, even those who are healthy gets older. Right. Um, and you learn how, you know, there's, there's, um, uh, who is the researcher who's, who, who researched really high performing like artists and, and scientists and inevitably, unless they uh, adapt a new mindset as their career ages, they get really dissatisfied and depressed because they try to continue to meet the standards that their, their younger self set. And, uh, and really becoming a teacher is, is the way to transition from becoming a creator, a problem solver, a doer, a builder to transition to another phase of your career uh, in a satisfactory way is to, to then use what you've learned to teach others. Um, because if you try to do the same stuff that you were doing when you're 30, if you try to keep up from that when you're 60, you just can't, you just can't. So, uh, so yeah, what I'm doing now is very much being a teacher and, uh, and uh, it, it's true. I mean, it really is true. That's, that's the shift that's, that's uh, proven to kind of satisfy all my, my desires, you know, and, and makes it feel like I am manifesting, uh, who I really am without having to hold back. Sure. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's huge to be able to kind of walk through that. And I think if you, um, if you understand that there's the animal that's within you that you kind of poke at and be like, Hey, I'm going to need your energy in a couple minutes, then that's a power in and of itself to be able to say, I got to turn this shit on. Um, and you're right, man. I mean, typically you don't have to be crazy. You, you just don't. There's no need for Tasmanian devil to come out unless there's an actual need. And we're typically not ever in the spot where we need to take, you know, a car off a child or, you know, burning, you know, run into a burning building. At least that's not what our professions are. Uh, but being able to tap back into that and having that power, it, it's interesting where you go throughout your day where really think about how many times you would jump back into that where you just be like, Oh, fuck it. I'm going to go do this thing. And you run after it when really you're like now, oh, okay, I should go do this. But first let me go, let me go get, grab a drink and then I'll go do that thing. Things are much more relaxed now. And isn't it interesting how you can kind of get through that stuff 
with without putting all that energy to it. But I find it super interesting where that energy comes from. Like I realized growing up that that's how people talk to people. That's how they did things. Do you feel like you kind of got that Tasmanian energy or the crazy energy from parents or, you know, maybe early mentors or anything? Or were you just kind of fucking nuts in your head and you're like, I need to get some of the energy out? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I always held myself to a super high standard of achievement. Maybe I was like for approval. I, I don't know. If you, if you want to get into like childhood stuff, I, uh, but I was my own worst enemy because I would um, end up going so hard and wouldn't let myself like my body. I've, I've had seven knee surgeries, just had my, my seventh a few weeks ago. Both my ACLs were torn, my shoulders torn up, um, all from sports because I wouldn't let myself stop. Because I held, I had this weird like hang up that I couldn't stop, even if my body told me to. So I'd go to a point where it broke, and that seems to have happened in life over and over and over again. And I, I mean, I think we're all to a degree wired in a certain way where like our brains think the saber toothed tiger's chasing us all the time because all this shit dinging constantly and requiring our constant attention, and it's always like our adrenals are shot. We're always in fight or flight. And, you know, we're, we're still the same basic makeup as we were when, when our, you know, ancient ancestors were roaming the savannas. Um, and so we get caught in this state of like, it's just our, our everything gets shot and exhausted. And so you almost have to, in order to maintain some equanimity, you have to, like, like you said, almost condition yourself to like not respond to the stimuli and just step back and take control over that and, dip in and out when you feel like, you know, it's, 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 it's valuable. So not be held slave to that, all those influences and distractions. And I've, I've turned off so many notifications over the past two years. It's like, it's gross. <laughs> it's gross. Uh, it, it's worse. It, it's stacked against us. It really is. It's like, so I don't know, right, rambling answer, but man, a good, good question. Yeah. I, you got to work hard and be intentional to kind of get to take a step back. Yeah. Well, I, I love that sort of stuff where you and I can talk about that. Like even now we can think about one of those times where a notification goes off. Like I try to even flip over my phone whenever I have, especially a podcast interview, because then I can't see the dumb notifications of like, oh, you should change this running back for this week in your fantasy team. Or did you know this person on LinkedIn? You're like, oh, no, I don't. Does so-and-so? My brain shouldn't be going there. Like it just shouldn't be, but we instantly get pulled into that shit. So what I was saying was I find it interesting how you and I can sit here and talk about it and look at that situation as like a third party, because it's so difficult in the moment to not pick up your phone, to check your email, to check all these things. And it's difficult to just set up a time and place to be able to do stuff without restricting yourself. So I hear different people talk about time blocking. <clears throat> um, and different just tips and tricks that they use to be able to keep their attention on things. But honestly, I think it all just differs. It's all dependent on what you fucking want to work with, what works for you. Like I've tried different things and certain ways work for me that I kind of piece them together or what have you. But what are you finding that you can still not only get your work done, put out content and just be you, work with your clients and have a nice i don't want to say relaxing day but move through your day without your fucking hair on fire so what have you kind of implemented in life to be able to do that yeah i mean i'm i'm very much a flow thinker um first a systems or a systems thinker you know so i i i what i've done is really just try to harness the energy that i have in that moment and 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 ride it as much as i can um you know, the structured, I have some structure to my day, especially to start the day. But if I'm feeling like I'm not in a place where I can get something done, what I used to do, I think what a lot of people do is just look at the screen for four hours and, you know, try to work, but, you know, switch over to doing, wasting their time most of the time, but like forcing through it. Whereas if I get into that mode, I'll just stop and go outside for a walk or get a workout in or read for a little bit and then see if I can get back into it. And when I'm like, if I, in the morning, I have a cup of coffee and I sit down at my computer uh, and I'm flowing, 
I'll say, screw it. No workout this morning. Like no meditate, no, whatever. I'm just going to go. Cause right, I'm, I'm in it now. And next thing you know, it's 10 hours later and I've had a great day. Uh, so I just, I really just listen to myself and go where the energy is flowing and, and I don't beat myself up about it. Awesome. Yeah. The grace to be able to allow yourself to not go to the gym because you're in a flow and being able to just stick with what you're doing. Um, uh, I, I love that sort of outlook. Um, I think the creative in me really just loves every bit of flowing. And there are certain times where I know disciplines and kind of routines help. Uh, you'd mentioned about meditation. Is meditation part of a routine that you have, even if you're you know, not kicking it to the side because you're in kind of a flow state, but just naturally on a typical day? Yeah, I mean, I used to meditate more. I've lost, I mean, I got into Wim Hof method for a long time. <laughs> The, the tummo breathing and, and cold exposure. And my, my morning routine has changed so many times over the past couple of years. Many, many cases, because I was trying all these different things for healing. I was trying to fix myself. Um, so now, yeah, I meditate occasionally. You know, I do stretching and like yoga um, in the mornings. But I mean, that, not going to lie, there are lots of mornings where I'll get out of bed put coffee on, sit down in front of the computer. And if I'm feeling it, I'm not going to stop. And mornings, oftentimes it's quiet. There's no, there's no distraction. And that's when I feel at my most creative. It's interesting. Cause like you, you read like scientists, like Andrew Huberman, who I love, who's all about neuroscience and kind of biohacking your behavior to, to, you know, and, and how mornings should be reserved for kind of structured system stuff, tasks, afternoons are when creativity hits for me on the mornings I'm, I'm the most creative and the most ambitious if i can get catch that wave in the morning sometimes i can ride it the rest of the day and then then everything is shot i'm like i'll, I'll do everything else when i can because that means i can because i know i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have a rough day <laughs> the next day or maybe a couple days later where i'm not gonna have that flow and i need to give myself the grace to just kind of chill have have a chill day Sure. I th I think of that as a uh, future me. Like there are times where I'm like, you know, future me is going to hate me for this. Fuck him. Whatever. And I do the thing. And then future me is like, damn it, past me. Uh, but there are certain times where I, I think you just got to you just got to call it right. Like, look, I'm here. I'm doing this thing. This is what I'm feeling. And you follow with that and you move through with that energy. Uh, and we've covered a lot of stuff. And Justin, I appreciate you being on. I appreciate you being open and vulnerable with us. What sort of advice would you give somebody that's on their path towards self-mastery? It's a, it's a journey. It is a journey. And so, you know, understand that uh, really there's never a destination for self-mastery. It, it is a constant, uh, you know, the moment you think you know it all is the moment you stop learning. And so self mastery is a, is a, is an endeavor that will never, that, that won't die until you do. And so, you know, just a, a very, a curious, a curiosity, an insatiable curiosity versus a, a desperate desire to improve is I think the most sustainable, healthy way to, 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 to uh, mindset to bring on that path in my experience. Well, I appreciate you sharing that and uh, share with us where people can find you, where can they connect with you? Yeah, uh, you can look me up on LinkedIn. I'm really active. Just look up Justin Mink and you'll find me. Uh, my website for EOS is eosworldwide.com forward slash Justin dash Mink. Mink, M-I-N-K, like a, like a fur coat. I'm sure that's not the first or last time you've said that. No, no, it's been a couple of times. Yeah, just a few. Well, man, again, thank you so much for being on. Appreciate your time. Great chatting with you. Uh, and everybody, all that information is going to be in the show notes. And thank you for being with us today. Thanks, Nick. It was great. Great chatting with you. I appreciate being on. Another great conversation on today's episode of the Mindset and Self Mastery Show. So what did you think of the show today? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And check out the Instagram or Facebook page to join the conversation. If you enjoyed the episode, please jump over to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and leave a five-star review. It helps us be found and helps others be healed. If this episode opened your eyes, made you think, or smile at all, then I'm sure it'll do the same for your friends. And check out the show notes for more info from today's episode and check out other episodes on themindsetandselfmasteryshow.com. 
as well as our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and look up The Mindset and Self Mastery Show. Thanks again to our incredible guests for being real, honest, and vulnerable with us today. But I'd like to thank our sponsors. And most importantly, I'd like to thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Your support means the world to us. And with that, remember, your mindset matters, and so do you.